Station, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Houston Station, Expedition 34, crews ready for the event. CNN, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call Station for a voice check. Hey, Station, this is Brooke Baldwin with CNN. How do you hear me? Brooke, we have you awesome. loud and clear aboard the International Space Station. Welcome aboard. Thank you, guys. Uh, let's rock and roll. Good, is, it good, is it good morning? Is it good afternoon? Good night? What is it for you all? It's about 2 o'clock in the afternoon, so it's a good afternoon for us. We've already put in about a half a day's work on board, and uh, after the event, we got a little bit more to go. So uh, it's middle of the uh, early afternoon. Kevin, let me begin with you as a station commander. Just, just brief us Earthlings here as, as far as what your mission is up there on the ISS. Well, I've uh, been out here about 140 days, and the real mission out here is to do science uh, really for the benefit of the Earth. Um, also, we do some test bed stuff, engineering uh, applications, if you will, for space flight. And uh, there are about 150 experiments going on at any one time, literally hundreds and hundreds uh, in the past and, and to come. A lot of scientists on Earth uh, think of things that they could do in zero G, things like the way uh, metals cure, for example, and the way uh, fluids uh, react in space can tell us a lot about some of the unknowns that we have on Earth. Um, also, we can do science, some medical science, uh, studies on osteoporosis, those kinds of things. There are scientists on the planet who have so many different kinds of ideas about what to do on the space station that uh, we, we just get to come up here and execute for them. And it's just a, a pleasure to be up here. Since I've been up here, I've just been uh, just in awe of uh, the experiments, the quality of the experiments, and what we've seen up here that has applications back on Earth. I have to tell you, as a huge space geek, I am in awe of all three of you. And, Tom, I cannot help but notice this camera floating in front of you, which makes me just kind of wonder, do you ever get used to this feeling of floating, of zero gravity? You get better at being able to do useful work in uh, zero gravity, but it's always fun. It's always a complete delight. It's like a dream, uh, being able to fly from place to place. And uh, your, your feet kind of become like your hands, and so that's why we don't have shoes on. We're always just wearing socks so we can uh, stabilize ourselves. But it's always an enormous amount of fun. Um, Chris, my question to you now, because you're really making waves with all your tweets, your pictures all around Earth, your sandwich making, uh, the peanut butter, the honey. I understand you've been rocking out with the chieftains and the bare naked ladies with your guitar. What do you make of just the response here on Earth, just from your Twitter page. Uh, Brooke, I, I think it's marvelous. Uh, when I first flew in space, gosh, 17 years ago, I've been trying ever since to let people know what a magnificent human experience this is. It's new for our species to be able to see our Earth in all of its just beautiful glory in one place, in one glance, in, in 90 minutes to, to go around the whole thing. To try and describe that, I do my best, but uh, now with the technology that NASA has on board and with technology like Twitter, we went over half a million followers today, in fact, that are directly following what we're doing on board here. We can show people real time th this incredible uh, richness that we are all privy to, that we all live with, but you just don't get to see any other way. And so I think the response reflects that. Uh, we are doing science on the space station. We're learning how to leave Earth permanently, but at the same time, it teaches us a tremendous amount about our planet and our place in it. And I think the followership on the Twitter feed and everything else really reflects that. Chris, do you have a favorite photo, a favorite vista, something you've seen from your perch high above us? Uh, when we're in the cupola, which is our huge bulging bay window that faces the Earth, um, sometimes, even sometimes all three of us jam in there, but often there are two of us in there waiting for something to happen. 
waiting to come up on a continent, or even maybe what I think is the most special, waiting for a sunrise or a sunset. Because that transition, as we race around the Earth and come into sight of the sun, or the sun comes into sight of us, the, the atmosphere blossoms so quickly with all the colors, just a rainbow exploding around the world. And, and then suddenly the world is, is bathed in the light of the sun because of our, our tremendous speed. And it's, it, it's, it's a repeating miracle. It's just beautiful to see, uh, to, be, to be privileged to be able to up here and see it. We all just are reverent about it when you see it. It, it takes your breath away every time. It's, and it's a way to see the world that I wish everyone could see in one quick glimpse. Um, and we're doing our best to let people see it that way. I know this is your job, this is your career, but I imagine just hearing the passion in all three of your voices, it, it sounds like a pinch me moment for all three of you. And, and I know you're all very involved in these tweet ups, talking to students from the ISS. Here's my question, because I covered the, the Atlantis Lodge. I mean, we now know that the space shuttle program is shuttered. How do you maintain that excitement in young people when someone says to and this is to any of you, I want to be an astronaut, there are no shuttles to get you there. So what's your response? Well, I'll, I'll start. I, I flew my last flight on Discovery uh, as, a, as a shuttle pilot. The shuttle program was fantastic for 30 years. The, the space shuttle built the space station. Uh, it wouldn't be here without it. It wouldn't be here without a lot of elements uh, like the Canada Arm 2 and, and so forth as well and all the contributions of our partners. But um, it's, just, it's just a magnificent, magnificent step that we're taking here. This is where we are learning to live and fly into space deeper. Uh, there will be more to come. Uh, there are programs on the horizon right now. Uh, we're looking at what the next step is going to be for us, and uh, the opportunities are still there. This is really, this really is just the first baby step into the universe. Uh, what we're doing here, as this this uh, this group of countries that came together to do this, make the space station a reality, the most affluent countries on the planet have put together a platform to teach us how to go deeper into space. And the, the, the new generations are the, are the ones that are gonna do that in the future. So uh, e even the shuttle itself was just an early generation spacecraft and, and some things that are really gonna happen that are even much cooler. The technology we're seeing on Earth now that you see in your everyday life will make space uh, me even uh, move along at a more rapid pace, I think, in the future. So uh, I'm, I'm just uh, really excited to see what we're gonna have 15, 20 years from now. I think we will be moving out into the solar system with humans and way out and beyond with, uh, with other kinds of machines. Can, can we, gentlemen, can we talk about asteroids? Because they've been making a lot of news down here where we are, uh, that there was uh, the quick buzz past uh, Earth a couple of weeks ago. We saw what happened um, with the meteorite over Russia and then just this week in another asteroid. I mean, straight up, how concerned should we be about asteroids hitting Earth? Well, the asteroids are out there, and we've got a, a surveillance system that's looking for them. You know, the chances are, are very, very small that anything would happen anytime soon. However, the chances is always out there. Asteroids are worth, worth looking at, not only where they are and where they're headed, but uh, they may very well be very rich in uh, minerals and other materials that would be very useful to us. So there's a lot of reason uh, to go out to them. Uh, the technology required to go to one and to uh, stay in sort of an orbit around one and to do a spacewalk so you could actually attach yourself to an, to an asteroid, that's all technology that we need to develop. And whenever we try something that hard, uh, all of the, the benefits, the technical benefits that come from that benefits everyone, really. So it's a wonderful endeavor. While I still have you all with about 60 seconds remaining, I just want to thank you profusely for talking to me. And, and I hear you all are capable of doing some sort of a space flip. So here's my favor. I'd love to use this in my show. Could you guys say something like, hello from the International Space Station, you know, you're watching CNN, and then flip for me? Is this possible? Hello, hello from, from the, the International, International Space, Space Station. Station. You're watching CNN. Woohoo! That's awesome. Good times. That's awesome. Thank you, you guys for us, so much. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. I, I would I would totally flip for you if I if I possibly could. Enjoy it. Thank you. Keep us posted. We're we're hanging on your every tweet and your photo. We are living vicariously through you, gentlemen. We appreciate you. Great to have you on board. It's uh, it's been our pleasure, Brooke. Thank you.